Day 1.1. I woke up one morning to find that the entire city had been covered in a three-foot layer of man-eating jam. I didn't notice straight away. Our apartment was on the third floor, so the day began as a fairly ordinary one. I got up around 11am to go job hunting. I tried to take a shower, but the hot water was off. I tried to have some cereal, but the milk was off. The whole refrigerator was off. I fingered the light switch. Nothing. The power was cut. Now this was any cause for concern. I glanced over at the increasingly urgent utility bills pinned to the court board by the front door. It wasn't that we couldn't afford to pay them, it's just that none of us ever really got around to it. At that point, Frank emerged from his bathroom wearing his gym clothes and with goose flesh dotting his arms and shoulders. Hot water's off, he said through his teeth. Power's off, I replied. Ah, oh, Christ. He ripped the most recent payment demand from the board. Was it off when Tim got back last night? Do you know? No, he got back late. I was in bed. Oh, I'll give him a call when I get back, he said, waving the bill. No worry about it. Thanks. You going to the gym? He pointed the word gym emblazoned brightly on his front of his vest. Yep. I'll come down with you. He raised one of his thick eyebrows at me. You gonna sign up? No, no, I said quickly. Just get breakfast somewhere. When are you gonna do it? I'll get a discount if I recommend someone. He prodded my stomach in his good natured but nonetheless painful way. You should start working out off as soon as you can. Your twenties only last so long. I know, I'll sign up. At some point. He raised a disbelieving eyebrow and I followed him out into the stairwell that led into the courtyard. He immediately parked his thick buttocks on the handrail with a short whoop of glee. He slipped down the first flight of steps, swinging around and sat on the next without waiting for me. He was already at the bottom by the time I reached the top of the last flight, so I was just in time to see him get eaten by the jam. He was looking back at me to shout encouragement, so he didn't notice it until, it, until he was on top of it, flopping bodily into a three foot of wobbling red that flooded the bottom of the stairwell. Ugh, he said. I heard him say in a disgusted tone of one falling victim to a messy practical joke. He swiftly became, ah, as he realised the jam wasn't letting him go, and in turn became, ah, when he saw his legs immersed in the semi-transparent goo stripped of their flesh over the course of a second. The rest of him summoned a burst of effort from somewhere, and his torso strained at the ropey red strands that wrapped around him like festive ribbons. He reached his last remaining arm out towards me, and his terrified eyes met mine. Then the jam shot out several more tentacles that fastened around his wrist, eyes and mouth, and he was yanked back in a desperate gurgle. His wristwatch, iPod and fittings slowly floated to the surface with a motion that seemed reminiscent of a set aside belch. I very, very slowly turned round and went back up the stairs. I must have let myself back into the flat. The next thing I knew, I was sitting rather stiffly on the living room sofa with my fingers drumming on my knees, staring at the master chef figurine Frank kept on top of the TV. After a while, the finger drumming didn't feel right. So I clutched my fires instead. That didn't feel right either, so I gathered my hands around my crotch. That felt even less right. Nothing felt right. Finally, I stood up slowly, holding my stomach in case it hurled itself up out of my throat and out of my face, and opened the blinds that covered the balcony doors. The balcony looked out onto the courtyard, we, but we generally kept the blinds closed because Frank, Frank who was dead, would always complain about the sunlight on the TV. It was a pleasant, cloudless Brisbane day. The sun beamed cheerfully across the balconies of the vacant flats opposite, I set the balcony doors aside and felt a warm breeze play gently on my face. What a lovely day. By now Frank, Frank who was dead, would have reached the gym, probably flirting with the receptionist on his way into the locker room. If he hadn't been dead, that is. I kept my, gla my gaze focused on the clear blue sky and stepped forward until I could clench my hands against the railing. I took a deep breath. Then I looked down. The jam had filled the courtyard and foyer and pushed the water out of the swimming pool. Where it touched the walls, little tendrils snaked their way upwards like searching fingers. There was an overpowering stench of strawberries. From my vantage point, I could see into some of the ground floor apartments. All of them were half filled with jam. The top half of TVs and stereos poking up like ele electronic eyelets. The occupants were nowhere to be seen. I went to the far end of the balcony and craned to look through the main entrance doors to the, at the street outside. I couldn't see much, but it looked like there was jam there too. It was only then I remember that a main road was barely 50 yards from the complex, and yet I heard no traffic noise. Please stop noticing things, went my brain. I'm having trouble finding room for them all. I wrapped my knuckles against the other set of balcony doors behind me, the ones that led to Tim's room. I'd been knocking continuously for close to five minutes before they finally stood aside. What? yelled Tim. He was naked save for a pair of cargo shorts, but he was still zipping up, and his blonde hair was unshowered and still chaotic from sleep. Yeah. I said, what? Jam. 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 His baggy, sleep-deprived eyes glanced left, right, and confused. Are you saying there's a jam? 
There is jam, yes, I pointed down there. He stepped out of his room dubiously and leaned over the balustrade. His eyes bulged and his mouth spread gradually into a grin. Holy shit, this is awesome. He bent his entire top half over the rail trying to look into the street. Is it jam? <laughs> it is jam, isn't it? I took up position next to him, supporting my face in my hands. It's got seeds. <laughs> yeah, whiffs of it, isn't it? That's Frank scene. Frank's dead. Another long silence passed, during which neither of us moved. When did it happen? About ten minutes ago. Dem stood upright and coughed. So the two important things that happened this morning, he said, enunciating slowly and carefully. One being Jam, the other being Frank dying. You felt Jam was the one worth mentioning. The Jam killed him, I said, finally getting the words out. He was eaten by the Jam. Ah, right. A pause. Actually, no, not right. Back up. What happened? I gave an account of the morning's events. Tim slowly nodded in bafflement after each significant word, drinking them all in one by one, but not quite connecting them in his head. Eventually, he ducked back inside his room and picked up his dressing gown off the floor. I think you're going to have to show me, he said. I led him in silence down the stairwell, stopping at the same place I stopped before, at the top of the last flight. The jam was where I'd left it, flooding the ground floor, pulsating slightly and slooping gooily below the fourth step. Is he in there? I asked him, squinting. It dissolved him. <laughs> I waved a hand uncertainly at the heaving mess. He's dead. Tim peered forward, examining the small collection of objects that were still bobbing on the surface at the foot of the stairs. A few coins, a keyring, and Frank's phone with the Mr. T plastic casing. Hmm, I thought Tim, thoughtfully, before pulling it off his left foot and hurling it in. The jam extended a couple of elongated peaks of itself to welcome it. The soul rapidly shriveled away into nothing in the grip of the corrosive red ooze, while the plastic toe strap popped free and drifted over to join Frank's pocket change. Like rubber but not plastic, said Tim to himself. Okay, well, what else do we know about it? It liked Frank. Like human bodies. Should we be taking notes? Tim. Yes. Frank's dead. Yes, I gathered that, Tim said. Are you alright? I, I don't know. I, I feel a bit numb. He pulled off his dressing gown and wrapped it tightly around his hand until there was a foot-wide cloth fist in the end of his arm. Then he made his way carefully down the stairs, one at a time, stretching his covered hand towards the jam. He stopped a few steps from the, below the surface. I, mean, uh, I noticed the jam had gone rather still and quiet, as if anticipating something. Uh, I said to him, what are you doing? Give me a hand. He wrapped his arm around my right wrist as I clung to the banister with my left. He leaned even closer to the jam and began dabbing at it with a dressing gown. I felt myself inhale sharply. It's all spongy, he reported. As if, as he examined the jam's texture, he failed to notice a large section of jam in front of him started to rise from the surface like a tombstone being pushed out from under the earth. After a few false starts, my voice said, Uh, Tim? It sort of feels nice, actually. He sto it stopped growing and when it was about six foot tall, then stood quivering back and forth uncertainly. Tim, there's... reminds me of that fat girl. Tim, I'm raising my voice now! He looked up just as the monolith of jam began to fall forward. I held him backwards as hard as I could, and we crumbled together under the stairs less than a second before the jam slabbed like wet pizza dough against the tiles, inches from Tim's feet. He smiled nervously, trembling from the adrenaline. Holy shit, he tried to eat me! I told you it ate Frank, I said. Took a deep breath. Frank's dead. Woo, I got all the way through that without too many mistakes this time. I didn't take too many takes at all. I have a feeling this series is going to take a very, very long time. Because the amount I can't read. So, I really hope the audio is picked up all right on this, because I don't really fancy doing that again today. So, yep, stay tuned. Uh, what should I read next? I might reach basically from left to right. So the next book uh, will be uh, Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach. I don't really know why I got this. Oh, actually, yeah, I do. I got it. It was a stupid English tutorial thing I like to get it for. Private tutor thing, because apparently I can't write or read. Yep, that's probably true. I still can't. So I'll be uh, reading and uploading that at some point. It will Probably be a slightly less funny. I hope it has actually chapters in it. Right. Yeah, I'll investigate that. 
Right, it's 10 minutes, so see you later.